Thanks. It is a tactic worthy of someone who is truly evil. I will never, number 16, I will never utter the sentence, but before I kill you, there's just one thing I want to know. Well, if you're the evil overlord, you already know everything you need to know, so. Hmm. That said, uh, at some point, you do want to interrogate someone about, you know, the enemy's plans and, and shit. Eh. That's where the interrogation rule comes in. Yeah. Number 17. When I employ people as advisors, I will occasionally listen to their advice. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's probably a good idea. That is why they're advisors. Mm, yes. 18. Nope. I will not have a son, although his laughably underplanned attempt to usurp power would easily fail. It would provide a fatal distraction at a crucial point in time. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah, yeah I suppose. Number 19. I will not have a daughter. She would be as beautiful as she is evil, but one look at the hero's rugged countenance and she'd betray her own father. Indeed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, because that's how cliche female characters work, I guess. Number, Number 20. Despite its proven stress-relieving effect, I will not indulge in maniacal laughter. When so occupied, it's too easy to miss unexpected developments that a more attentive individual could adjust to accordingly. <laughs> also known as what has happened in almost every movie with, a, with an over-the-top villain ever. Not least, I think, wait. Sometimes, sometimes, it, 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 sometimes it's bestial roaring and stuff in place of maniacal laughter, but it's the same, you know, thing. I guess, like like Yagami would be a good would be a good example, even though it wasn't necessarily maniacal laughter. Hmm. All he had to do was wait two thing. more it's a good thing you seconds. Cut out so badly there, otherwise you might have spoiled something in a show I haven't actually watched yet. Let me just say this: all you would have had to do was wait two more seconds. Two more seconds. He had to keep his mouth shut for that long. But no. Number 21. I will hire a talented fashion designer to create original uniforms for my Legion of Terror, as opposed to some cheap knockoffs that make them look like Nazi stormtroopers, Roman foot soldiers, or massive Mongol hordes. All were eventually defeated, and I want my troops to have a more positive mindset. <laughs> okay, don't hire Tetsuya Nomura. That's all I have to say. Nah. No, no, all of your soldiers will be, you know, talking about how ridiculous they look in their asymm asymmetrical leggings and their many belts and zippers, and say it's not worth it. Number two, no matter how tempted I am with the prospect of unlimited power, I will not consume any energy field bigger than my head. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I mean, you know, if it's bigger than your head... That's it, it. Probably won't fit in there," he said, stating the obvious bluntly. Number twenty-three. I will keep a special cache of low-tech weapons and train my troops in their use. That way, even if the heroes manage to neutralize my power generator and/or render their standard issue energy weapons useless, my troops will not be overrun by a handful of savages armed with spears and rocks. Ewoks. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know what? You, you might want to program your droids to be able to operate independently, even if your control station, you know, just happens to blow up for some reason. Also known as kind of the episode one, what the fuck. It's like, just because you captured the voice ray doesn't mean the droids would suddenly just stop attacking. <laughs> It's it, it, it like, what, what was that control station doing? Was it was it beaming power down to them or something? Because, you know, all of the droids just die. Fall apart, even, the moment the thing goes out. Yeah, it's like, you would, it's, it's never explained. It's like, you think they would just be programmed to hunt down those guys until the battle was over. Yeah, and you know what? Even if the control station did screw them up, instead of all just stopping dead, you'd think maybe they, you know, freeze with at least freeze with their trigger finger still pulling the trigger, or you know, go out of control, maybe go berserk, just start shooting things aimlessly. Just it would actually kind of be funny to see a droid army like blow itself to pieces. 
and mm-hmm. killing the occasional Jar Jar Binks along the way. Multiple times, hurt. hopefully. Multiple times, yeah. I, I see that. I see that being, you know, valid. I see that being a good idea. Yeah, why couldn't Star Wars have done that? Because Lucas is an idiot, that's why. Well, well, you know he was an idiot when he put Jar Jar in the first place, but... Oh, well, true. Eh, all right, number 24. I will maintain a realistic assessment of my strengths and weaknesses. Even though this takes some of the fun out of the job, at least I will never utter the line, No, this cannot be. I am invincible. After that, death is usually instantaneous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no matter how well it would perform, I will never construct any sort of machinery, which is completely indestructible except for one small and virtually inaccessible vulnerable spot. <laughs> you know, I heard I heard something, I don't know if this is true, but somewhere in the expanded universe, I heard that, you know, the guy who designed the Death Star with that exhaust port, the Emperor, like, tortured him to death, cloned him, and then tortured him to death again, and then cloned him again, and then just kept doing it, and doing it, and doing it. I would, fi- if I were the Emperor, I would find that rather amusing, so. <laughs> uh... Yeah, well. Okay, what number was that? That was number that was 25. 25. So yes. number 26. No matter how, attract- how attractive certain members of the Rebellion are, there's probably someone just as attractive who is not desperate to kill me. Therefore, I will think twice before ordering a prisoner be sent to my bedchamber. Yeah, yeah, the old thinking with the wrong head rule. Mm. Yeah, probably a good idea. Hmm. Number 27. I will never build only one of anything important. All important systems will, be, will have redundant control powers and panels. For the same reason, I will always carry at least two fully loaded weapons at all times. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Especially on the weapons part, just because you know you're going to lose the first one when the hero knocks you over the first time. Yeah, yeah. You know what? The Jedi should have really carried a second lightsaber at, at some point. <sighs> Number 28. My pet monster will be kept in a secure cage from which he cannot escape or and into which I could not accidentally stumble. Hmm. Sorry, yeah. pit anyone? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Oh, wait, wait. Was the Sarlacc really, like... A pet? I thought it was just, you know... A it was monster. just a hole in the ground, but it, 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 it's, it's the same monster. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Number 29. I will dress in bright and cheery colors, and so throw my enemies into confusion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, as long as you don't overdo it like a certain, um, you know, clown does, that then, you know... I'm not talking about the Joker, either. I'm, I'm talking about you know, another clown who's kind of like that, but not. And it's in a particular Square NS game ending with four. Eh? Four? Or six, I can't remember. Six. Six. My... You've got your Roman numeral backwards. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm talking about Kefka. <clears throat> but he was bad shit insane, so he has an excuse. Thirty. All bumbling conjurers, clumsy squires, no talent bards, and cowardly thieves in the land will be preemptively put to death. My foes will surely give up and abandon their quest if they have no source of comic relief. No, not the spoony bards. <laughs> what will they do without the spoony bards? Um, uh, well, we'd be able to take our earplugs out, but, you know, that's just and, a small plus. Man. 31. All naive, busty tavern wenches in my realm will be replaced with surly, world-weary waitresses who will provide no unexpected reinforcement and or romantic subplot for the hero or his sidekick. I don't know how often that actually comes up, but yeah, that seems like a decent idea. Yeah, yeah, it does. Although... You'll probably probably get the the normal people who go to the bar rather mad, but... (laughs) All right. Number 32. I will not fly into a rage and kill a messenger who brings me bad news just to illustrate how evil I really am. Good messengers are hard to come by. 
yeah, 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 yeah. 